Christ is risen. Христос воскресе. Христос обнял. Христе обзгал. Братья и сестры в Христе, давайте рассказать в Господе о большом Compassion and love of uh, our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, which He has manifested uh, during His life on the earth, and uh, now all the days of our life, for ever since He uh, ascended into the heavens, His great um, love for mankind, and we see that in, uh, His compassion and His love and His will to save the whole mankind and. Uh, call everyone to the knowledge of his truth. Uh, we see that especially uh, reading the Holy Gospel and uh, today again we for, our, for us is um, uh, presented the Gospel according to John where we uh, learned that uh, Christ was uh, coming from Judea going to Galilee and he had is he supposed to go through Samaria. Uh, Samaria was located in, uh, in the middle in between uh, Galilee and uh, Judea and as you know that Samaria was uh, um, a province of um, uh, a province where uh, uh, Jews and the pagans used to live all together and uh, they were uh, separated from uh, the Jews uh, they had their own temple there uh, the Jews would uh, despise them considering them more heathen than uh, the Jews Nevertheless, these people, they were keeping uh, the law, they were uh, keeping, uh, recognizing five uh, books of, of Moses, and uh, they had their own ideas of, about the Messiah and uh, about the salvation. The Jews uh, had uh, their own, and th there was all the time contradiction between them. But as you've noticed that... Um, Christ actually explained to the woman saying that uh, uh, we know, we as the Jews, we, we keep the truth. But, uh, so we see that Christ is coming uh, uh, to Samaria and he's sending away his disciples to buy some food. And uh, again, I praise you to see his providence because everything uh, from now on what Christ is doing is uh, done on purpose. He was to... Uh, instruct us that not only the Jews but also all the nations are called uh, to salvation and he wants to everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth and on purpose Christ is coming to the to a well which is uh, was um, uh, dug out by uh, patriarch Jacob a long time ago <coughs> and uh, the Samaritans they uh, worship this place they also was, were considering themselves descendants from the patriarchs. So um, we see that a certain Samaritan woman, she's coming to grab some water and uh, have you noticed that Christ is he himself addressing to her, give me some water to drink. So he is wanting to, to, to involve her in, in a dialogue. But she is perplexed. Uh, she's asking, asking uh, Christ, how come you are uh, being as a Jew and he, she knew that he is a Jew because the manner Christ was dressed. And how, how come you as a Jew is asking me, a Samaritan, to give you some water? Um, so she, um, because uh, you, the Jews, you do not associate to, with us, with Samaritans. But uh, we, can, we can also develop this uh, dialogue and say that indeed uh, how did Christ uh, dare to talk to her? The Jews then not only didn't associate, they were despising the Samaritans. They were considering them as um, unclean dogs, as um, sinners who do not uh, deserve to be even called the Jews because they were intermingled with other nations and that happened uh, hundreds of years uh, immediately after uh, uh, during the Babylonian uh, captivity and uh, they had their own customs which were some of them uh, uh, quite uh, pagan and for reason the Jews would not uh, accept them right but Christ uh, is uh, is uh, uh, answering her with uh, another question 
question for the question, saying, if you knew who is asking, if you knew the, the grace of, of God, the grace of God because the God is addressing to somebody who is uh, uh, considered as uh, unclean some, by the Jews, somebody who is renegated by the Jews. So if she knew the grace of God, that, that's showing that God is the God of all the nations. God is not the God only of the Jews. He is the Father of all the nations. But the nations, they uh, wandered, and they, uh, in time, as we read in the Holy uh, Bible, in time they uh, just forgot about the true God, and they started to worship other gods. But uh, as Apostle Paul is saying, the idol in the world is nothing. So the, all the gods they worshipped, they were nothing. Uh, holy um, apostles and holy fathers, they were saying that these gods, they were uh, unclean spirits, demons. But nevertheless, they also were creatures. They were not true gods. So here uh, Christ is saying, if you knew the grace of God, the love of God, the grace of God who wants you to come to, into the knowledge of the truth, you would ask him to give you water, and he will give you the, uh, the living water. And uh, here Christ is um, uh, bringing uh, quotation from uh, prophet Isaiah. He said that uh, in the last time I will give uh, people uh, um, from the abundance of them my spirit. And uh, they will receive, uh, the, uh, they will um, acquire the spring which will become in themselves, which will be the spring of the uh, living water. So, but she could not understand. She could not understand. Nevertheless, she knew uh, the, the scripture because uh, you see that she uh, is uh, say, uh, saying that uh, you Jews uh, um, worship in the temple in Jerusalem. We, we worship here. And, but uh, who keep the truth? So we cannot say that she was absolutely ignorant that she didn't know the scriptures. But we see that she knew some, some of the scriptures. And uh, here Christ is... Um, is saying that uh, yeah we keep the truth you are a bit uh, you went a bit away from from the truth and um, she doesn't understand then Christ is saying uh, she's saying give me that water she considering that Christ is talking about the water which is in the well that I don't need to get thirsty anymore I don't need to come and grab water from here she doesn't understand the meaning of the scripture nevertheless she knew the scriptures and uh, Christ once said, go and call your, your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. You're right. You, didn't, you don't have a husband. Uh, indirectly, Christ is saying, you're living now in adultery with the man with whom you're living now. You have five husbands. But pay attention, Christ is not, uh, is not condemning her. He doesn't say, oh, you sinner, you're now living in, with, this, with this man. Shame to you. He doesn't say, say that. But he somehow... Uh, so presuppose her to, be, to, to, to understand, yeah, indeed, I am um, living in kind of, of adultery because this man is not my, my husband. So uh, Christ is, uh, uh, we see this dialogue with the Samaritan woman, and uh, then she's leaving her uh, uh, water jar and she's riding into the, into the city and she's telling to people, uh, I just met a man who told me everything I have done. Maybe he is Christ. And uh, we see what, uh, uh, here we um, achieve that, uh, the climax of this uh, story when, uh, on which we have to pay attention, especially that people from Samaria, they believe this woman and they came to meet Christ. Just because she said, I met a man who said, uh, told me everything I have done. Maybe he is Christ. And from here we can see that indeed people of Samaria, they also were, uh, uh, were uh, waiting for Christ. And uh, the Samaritan woman, she also uh, mentioned that. She, she said, we are waiting for Christ and he will teach us the truth. And Christ, remember, he said, I am him to, uh, who, uh, who is speaking to you. And uh, she believed in, in him, right? And now uh, here, pay attention that Christ just was in, in, in uh, Judea, and he worked m miracles there. He preached the gospel, and they didn't believe in him. They were seeking to kill him. And here, on another hand, we see that this uh, Samaritan woman, to whom Christ told everything she has done, 
and to whom Christ is saying, I am him whom you are waiting. And she believed in him. And people from the city came to meet Christ. And they asked him to stay uh, in their city. Nevertheless, he was a Jew. And Christ comes. And the apostles also were perplexed. How come he's speaking to this woman? Uh, we're not supposed to speak to, to a Samaritan. Especially to a woman when uh, her husband is not nearby. But nobody dared to, to blame Christ or say anything. So we see that Christ went into Samaria and he spent two days there. And at the end, we hear um, um, the uh, Apostle John saying that many of them believed in Christ. Many of them said, we believe now not because you told us, uh, uh, meaning the woman, but because we ourselves now not just believe, but we know that this is uh, the Christ, the Savior of the whole world. So uh, you see uh, the contrast which is in between the Jews, uh, because Christ is from among the Jews, and they didn't believe in him. And on the other hand, the Samaritans, half uh, Jews, half um, pagans, uh, intermingled with the teachings of uh, Moses and teachings and customs of the pagans, and they believed in Christ. So um, here uh, the Apostle uh, John is mentioning about this uh, occurrence on purpose, especially for all the generations which will come afterwards. And this is very actual even for us, who are present here in the Holy Temple, and we heard this Gospel. Because we ourselves, we consider uh, to be as a new, a new, uh, the people of the new uh, Israel, the people of the new covenant, of the new testament. We know the holy uh, scriptures, we know the commandments of Christ, but nevertheless, uh, look at our own attitude about uh, the church, uh, when I, uh, about the church, about Christ, about the faith. And here I uh, mean those who were baptized in the, the name of the uh, Holy Trinity. Those who claim to be uh, Orthodox Christians. But indeed, uh, what we see that uh, uh, almost never we see them uh, in the church. Almost never they come to uh, give thanks to Christ for everything they have received uh, in their life. And how can we give uh, thanks to Lord? And we read that in the uh, Psalm, which is uh, one, uh, 115, before the Holy Communion, what will uh, I give, how can I give render, uh, how can I render thanks to the Lord for everything He has done to me? I will take the cup of the Lord and, uh, and I will call the name of the Lord. You see, uh, receiving communion is the way of thanksgiving to God for everything He has done to us. And uh, uh, in reality what we see, the small uh, percentage of the uh, Orthodox Christians come to the church. Even those who come to the church from time to time, uh, ask yourself, uh, how much time will you spend for Christ during the weekdays? And I know my, uh, myself, because I am the one among, first among you who spend little time for Christ. Uh, maybe we say some prayers in the morning, during the day, uh, in the evening, but um, thanks to the Lord we come to the church, but even this small amount of time we spend in the church is, is a way uh, lower, low, uh, 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 way little comparing to that time which we spend for these earthly cares. And uh, uh, we have to ask ourselves the, the obvious question, am I loving God? As, as Christ uh, commanded to me. Am I loving my neighbor as myself? But first of all, I have to love my, my God from all my heart, from all my, my, with all uh, my uh, mind, with all my being. But am I loving Him? Uh, let, let us be truth with, uh, 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 sincere with ourselves. Let us not um, uh, be in self-delusion. Because we, we, we love to delude ourselves. We say, oh, I love God. Yes, I love Christ. I love church. But how much time am I spending for, for Christ? How, I, how much time am I spending for, for, for God? I'm not uh, saying that we have to spend almost all our time praying and do, making prostration and uh, reading gospel, reading uh, Holy Fathers, because we, work, we are working and we have no time for that. 
in the end. But at least we, oh, everything depends on us, we can approach to this, at least balance, you know, the, the time we spend for ourselves, for these earthly cares which will perish when we, we uh, depart from this life and we will not take anything with us, and uh, that time which we uh, spend for Christ. And uh, next time when uh, is Sundays, um, and uh, you wake up in the morning and think, oh, maybe today I will not go to the church because I want to watch a soccer game or a hockey or I want to go for uh, whatever, in, in the mountains for hiking. Think about that. Am I loving Christ? Yes, I'm loving Christ. Then I have to go and visit Him first. Not because God is uh, uh, not everywhere. God is everywhere present and feels all things. But the presence of Christ, the present, because He is truly God, the presence of the Holy Trinity is especially visible here in the church. In, uh, uh, it, it is invisible, but we, uh, uh, we can feel that. And uh, where else can we receive the Holy Communion of body and blood of Christ? Never, uh, nowhere else. We cannot do that at home. We cannot, even we spend hours on Sundays at home, which I doubt, be, since, be, be honestly, I doubt that uh, those who don't, do not come to the church on Sundays uh, uh, tell to themselves, okay, I'm, I'm not going to the church, but well, I will spend four hours uh, reading the Psalter, reading the, uh, the Gospel, reading the Holy Fathers. I don't think so. And uh, I myself would not, would not do that be honest, if I would stay home on Sundays. So, uh, brethren and sisters in Christ, I'm calling you to uh, be sincere with yourself. If you claim to love Christ, do the commandments of Christ. Uh, if we will uh, learn to uh, love Christ, and that cannot be done uh, elsewhere than in the church, because the church is the pillar of the truth. Apostle Paul is saying that. And in the church, we receive the body and blood of Christ. And this way, that's, that's amazing, receiving the body and blood of Christ, which is that source of living water, that source of, of the life, we actually give thanks to the Lord. So can you see anything, anything like that in other religions? You will not see that, definitely. We come here and we receive the, the Holy Communion uh, and God is, is inviting us to be sons, His sons, through the, this Holy Communion. So we learn to love Christ. We'll, uh, uh, if we believe in Christ, then we believe in the Holy uh, Trinity, in the Father and the Holy Spirit also. If we do not love Christ, uh, about what love can we uh, talk uh, toward Christ? It's just a self-delusion. And also, as I said, uh, the presence in the Church, not because uh, Christ needs that, but because we need that. The church also is a spiritual hospital. And uh, have you noticed uh, that uh, most, most of the Protestants, they, uh, they say, uh, they are saying about uh, individual, personal relationship with Christ. But we say, no, that's not true. Because Christ said, where two or three will be gathered in my name, I will be in the middle of them. Right? And when we, we say uh, our Father, we don't say my Father who, is, who art in the, in the heavens. Uh, how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me my, uh, give me thy, uh, the, uh, uh, give me the, the bread. But we say our Father, give to us and forgive us. So the, as, a, as, as a holy uh, community in Christ, as a body of Christ. So, Think about that. Again, next time when uh, you feel quite not uncomfortable, not uncomfortable, but uh, hesitating to come to the church and uh, give glory and thanks to Christ, think about, is Christ, uh, do you love Christ indeed? And uh, are you part of His uh, Holy Church or not? So, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope you, you heard my, my voice and uh, uh, I hope that next time our congregation will keep going, will keep uh, growing more and more. And uh, indeed, uh, for me, it's a great joy to see you uh, present here and uh, receiving the Holy Communion. May Christ our God uh, uh, receive our prayers and also illumine our hearts 
to give glory also to Him and to His Father and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, one is in essence and I divide it. God bless you. Amen. Amen.